I guess I don't have a lot of time remaining. Let me show you some of the pictures um, where I guess I don't know how interesting these pictures are. Uh, oops, that's wrong. Um, I don't think I'll, well, maybe. I will show you pictures of the lab where I used to work, and I'll show you pictures of things that are bigger. These are just two pictures of oscilloscope, like the ones you have, probably older than the ones you have. Oh, this is a better oscilloscope. It's a digital oscilloscope. <laughs> um, and uh, sorry, I guess let me just skip through this. Um, so this is kind of um, the setup. You can't really see in this picture. So um, you see a lot of elements here. Many of them are mirrors and mounts that are designed to uh, allow you to adjust those mirrors very by small amounts. Um, so let me skip through. Oh, this is a setup I had uh, for measuring property of a, there's a piece of plastic here. Um, a lot of the research I did dealt with the polarization of light and um, in, call it polarimetry, and you use polarization of light to you measure properties of material. Um, so that's the device I had here. Um, so this is a very simple tabletop experiment. It consists only of laser, some mirrors, and a detector, a polarimeter. That's it. That's how simple it can be uh, for the kind of very simple things I was doing. And this is, I guess, uh, it's the best picture I have of the lab. So this is what we mean, a tabletop experiment. This is my table. Everything fits on the table, including these uh, pulse lasers, uh, ND arc lasers. This is a cryostat. So in my research group, ours was not ultra cold at AMO physics group. It was the cold. Uh, well, not necessarily all the cold. I was the only guy doing the cold experiment. So this is a cryostat. Uh, outside is a jacket for liquid nitrogen. You fill it with liquid nitrogen that keeps the inside colder. And you fill the inside with the helium. So I do experiments which are down here. You can't quite see. I think I have other pictures. Uh, yeah, you do experiments down here. That's my experimental region, which you can get down to be as cold as 2 Kelvin. So we, I wasn't doing any laser cooling, so I don't get to these temperature levels. Um, so um, yeah, sometimes you have to improvise in the lab. Um, all these things are helping me apply a very precise amount of force, or precise known amount of force, because I could just measure the weights of these and just add them up. Um, Oh, and one of the things, so research is an interesting environment where you see a lot of kind of jerry-rigged stuff, right? They are low quality, um, but you know, I know what I'm doing. I don't need this to be fancy and good looking. But sometimes you do have access to um, things that cost a lot to get to that level of precision. This is a large, short focus lens. And if you ever see short, like if you get a very large magnifying glass, and you look through it, you would not get an image that looks like this. One particularly striking thing with this is lack of distortion around the edge. This is, that's, you know, the reason you get the distortion is because of spherical aberration. Uh, low quality lenses, they are spherical surfaces, you get spherical aberration. This is a parabolic lens. That's why up to the very edge, you don't get any aberration. Um, so I think it, this one lens costs like $500, $1,000. I wouldn't get it for our lab because it costs too much. <laughs> but when you're doing research, you spend the money where it's worth it. So you do have access to things that you otherwise don't have access to. Uh, I, I don't know what I was doing here, so I'll just uh, skip this through. Uh, I think I was measuring, oh, I think, uh, which picture? Ah, I was measuring property of this plastic here. <laughs> That's what that was. Um, uh, and this is, uh, um, I was doing some measurement uh, for a bigger experiment. Uh, we are trying to characterize some property of the plastic and some behavior of charges in liquid helium. So all these are kind of custom built in a machine shop we have access to in the physics department. Um, that's one of the fun things in research that um, you get to kind of think about these things and kind of build it. And I guess, uh, some aspect of this is coming even to community college. We have a fab lab. How many here have heard about fab lab that we have at Laney and College of Alameda? So they don't have quite the same level of precision, but you can do something similar in the sense that if you can imagine it, you can build it up to some tolerance. And I felt like that was a really um, fun aspect of research, where you are not limited to just things you can buy off the shelf. You can build the things you need. Um, 
Um, and yeah, this is some, um, sometimes you do buy new equipment because you need it, but this actually didn't do what it wanted to do. So I had to build this to, um, as a, a polarity switching device for the high voltage thing. And um, building this was fun, but uh, I guess, wait. Uh, and nothing much here. I think I'm kind of running out of time. Oh, and this is uh, pictures of the new cryostat that we bought. Um, so this is the old cryostat. This is the new cryostat. It's much thinner because it doesn't have a liquid nitrogen jacket. They uh, somehow built it in a way they could just operate with the helium source alone and no liquid nitrogen jacket. Uh, and that's kind of where I guess the end of my career in research. And then soon after this, I started teaching here and I'm here. <laughs> uh, sometimes people break your stuff and you do what you need to do to keep it working. Um, I have a, a, I think I'm out of, am I out of time? I am. Um, let me, okay, I'll skip the pictures I have from Krakow, Poland, just to show you that. So the kind of research, a lot of research done in atomic physics is more individual than um, other areas of physics. But, um, so this is a common feature of, um, in fact, research and engineering, any big things, it has to be a collaborative work. There's a limit to how much one person can do. So, um, so the work I was doing, it was as part of a collaboration of much bigger group of people. And I just wanted to show you some pictures that kind of indicates the size scale. So this is uh, uh, an addition they are building to, a, um, uh, building to a building called Spallation Neutron Source. It's one of the facilities at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And this is the addition they were building. This picture doesn't do justice for the scale of this building. So let me scroll to the picture of the building. Uh, this is the apparatus, apparatus. Oh, so this, is that, this box is that addition that they are building. And here's where you can kind of get a sense of the scale. These are shelves. So if we are to stand, you would stand a little bit shorter than this um, apparatus. And this is where actually, there are the people there, see? Um, and this is the actually base of that addition to the building they're building. This is from 2009, so I'm pretty sure they already built it and they're doing stuff on it now. Um, so that's the full collaboration, like 20 institutions back when I was in it. Um, I thought there was more, oh, more. Um, draw, uh, this is the portion I was uh, uh, proposing. Uh, so this is a table, like about this height. So person standing will be about here. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's more or less it. All right, so that's uh, everything um, I have time for. Um, I want you to show you more. Um, well, let me just, I think I'm, I am out of time, but let me just show you this portion. So um, I guess uh, all these uh, presentations, they've been pretty experiment heavy. And one of the guys in my advisor's research group uh, did a lot of theoretical work, uh, calculation work. And um, he, like, if you are interested in atomic physics theory, uh, this kind of gives you an idea of, um, uh, like, what he has on this public website kind of gives you an idea of what kind of stuff an atomic physics theorist does. Here's some demonstrations here, like a three level system. Um, and this is all oh, mathematical calculation. And it, this is what this, uh, these codes are simulating, a three-level system. And this represents kind of uh, interaction with the electromagnetic wave, that light that you're imposing. Um, and a lot of stuff I learned about Mathematica was uh, working on a uh, uh, modeling of an atomic uh, system um, with the help of the package that he built. Um, so it, it, all, learning all this stuff, it takes more than uh, even four years of college. That's why you had to go to graduate school to be doing a lot of this kind of work. I just want to um, use where we are in the class as an excuse to show you some aspects of this. And um, I realize many of you are probably going into fields of engineering um, where none of this really matters. <laughs> but, um, it's a kind of, uh, for people majoring in physics and maybe thinking of research in physics, that's the kind of fun thing you get to do.